to another edition of Homemade Tools. Today we're going to look at this uh, workbench that I made uh, quite a while ago. It's evolved uh, over the past year and a half uh, to the state where it is now. This is my main workbench. It's pretty small. It's about two feet by two feet. And uh, I use it all the time. I wish I had some other stuff on it, but for now, I, I can always find a way to make do with this. Um, and this is a, what you might call like a miniature workbench or a low workbench. It really is just designed to fit onto another bench. So, uh, with for the construction, uh, there's actually two versions of this bench, if you will. The, the first one started off just as a work surface, which is the top two layers here of plywood. Uh, I made this when I was in Vancouver and uh, it served me pretty well. I could just clamp that down and then I could hold smaller pieces of uh, wood that I was working. And then later on, I added these two risers, one in the front and one in the back uh, with the doggles as well to bring it up a little bit more and, and suit this new uh, bench that I'm using now, which is not really a bench, it's just a table. Um, so looking at the top here, <clears throat> all I did to make it was take two pieces of plywood, uh, five eighths or three quarters, I forget. I sandwiched them together and then I left, uh, I don't know, an inch or an inch and a half uh, on either side to build these wooden T-tracks here. And then I also have dog holes everywhere so that I can put uh, dog hole accessories in, uh, in everything that I need, actually. <laughs> um, so let's look at the T-Track first. The T-Track I made by, by using a table saw um, and a planer. It's actually two pieces of wood laminated together with the profile. And then I just um, use the planer to bring it down to size and to reveal the T-Track there. The, um, the T-Track allows you to use a T-bolt to ride on the inside. It's actually, the profile looks like a T. And uh, that's what, how this is held in place here, for example. So I have one made of maple here and I have one made of elm. I would not do elm again. Um, the elm just kind of is a little too squishy uh, and it's hard to get the T-bolt out sometimes. But the maple one seems to be holding out pretty good. But probably uh, the aluminum ones from Lee Valley are the way to go. I think if I did this again, I would just buy the aluminum ones and save a couple, you'd spend a couple of dollars more uh, and then have a lot, lot more use out of it. Uh, the dog holes are used to put in pieces of three quarter inch dowel. And I have quite a few of them. There's different profiles, different sizes. Um, I use long ones and short ones. This one has a bit of a, a a bevel on it so it's bigger here than it is here it's smaller so it's got a, a, a bevel on it so when you're using wood it when you're pushing up against it it'll generally push the piece, work piece downwards whereas if you have just a straight one like this the piece can kind of go upwards or downwards or or whatever so this is just a little bit better um, and the dog dog holes are useful for a lot of things uh, planing, chiseling, sanding, just holding work down. It's, it's a great way to, it's a great system to use for that. So let's take a look at something here. So if I want to plane, for example, this piece of uh, pine down, generally what I would do is I wouldn't even clamp it. I would just push it up against the, the dog here with the angle on it. And I should be ready to go. Uh, as long as I'm well adjusted. There we go. That's good. Click. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's how I would, that's how I plane a lot of the stuff that I use. I don't really 
need to clamp it down or to put it in a vise. So quite often, just one dog is enough. If you have a bigger piece of wood, you can also use a second dog here and um, put like a spacer here. Like this gives you maybe a bit more support for a longer piece or a wider piece rather. Whereas this can kind of cantilever around like this, you're kind of forcing your, your work piece is not going to move quite so much. Another thing I use these dogs for is for clamping along with this um, device that I made. So right now I'm building an electric guitar for somebody and um, I've been working on the neck and profiling the uh, radius into the fretboard. So there's a bit of a radius here and I use this vice here to do that with a um, with a radius and block, just a certain radius in it. I just run that along there. Basically all I do is I just put the dogs in the nearest dog hole and then I can slide in some pieces until I can get that space that I need. And then I can clamp it down. solid it's all enough for uh, radiusing a fretboard so I use this a lot for that so this vice this little vice here or work holding thing just travels in the t-track so I've got dog holes here I've also have one two three six dog holes here in the front riser and for that I use my um, hold fast quite a bit. A hold fast is something that you can, that will wedge a piece into shape, uh, into place. So say I want to hold that there. Um, just have to go grab my hammers and slap them in place. And I use a rubber hammer for this all the time because it's not going to get destroyed as much as the other ones. So you just give it a slam there and it's, it's pretty good to go. You can put a second one in. You can use a second hold fast as well. If the first one's not enough. Something like that. There, now you get two hold fasts working together. You know, you could do some work on that. Um, and the way I, the way I joined the risers to the worktop is just with some insert nuts and some uh, bolts again. I've got four bolts here and four insert nuts going into the, um, into the risers. And for the risers, what I did is I took two pieces of like pine or uh, spruce risers and chopped them into shape. And I also inlaid or inserted a piece of oak down the middle where the insert is because it's a little stronger, both on this side and on this side. And then on this side, because I have the, um, the dog holes going through, there's a piece of oak that runs, runs the length of the back to give it some support so it doesn't blow out quite so much. Seems to be doing a good job of it. And I also have just a bench hook here to help me push out the uh, keep in place. So when I'm pushing with the the, uh, the, the, the plane, the bench is not going to go flying. If the bench hook wasn't there, you'd put it and that would go flying. But the bench hook does a good job of keeping it there. And I also can clamp it. Generally, I'll clamp it as well with the bench hooks and everything stays in place pretty well. Um, I think if I were to make this again, I'd make it a little bit longer because, you know, this is a short guitar neck, but it still doesn't, it's, it doesn't quite span the, uh, or it spans plus some the, um, the work surface. So having an extra foot and a half or maybe even two feet would have been sort of the ideal for me. But, you know, I'm still kind of figuring everything out. So yeah, this workbench is great for holding on to work for planing, sanding, chiseling. If you're chopping out mortises, um, I do it all the time. Like chopping out a mortise and something like this here all the way through, I'll generally just put it in here. Use the hold fast to keep it in place. 
and then I can just chop down with a hammer and a chisel until I'm at the right depth and do it from the other side as well. Um, so yeah, this moving mortise here is how, um, this mortise here I chopped out using the bench and some chisels. It works pretty well. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, that's the workbench, the work surface that turned into a workbench that I use all the time. I wish I had a vise on it, maybe like a little end vise, but I don't think I have quite the room for it. I did buy a vise for like a little workbench, one of those little four inches, inch, uh, four inches. but um, I, I just never got around to putting it in. Um, I don't know if I'd have quite the room anyway with everything in, in the way here. And that might be uh, something I keep for another project later on.